In this video, I'm going to show you how I learn and study chess openings. There are a lot of ways to go about studying different openings and learning new lines, but these are the practical steps that have worked best for me so far. I'll give you some realistic tips for building out a repertoire as a non-professional player, and then I'll walk you through my process for creating an opening study. So in any given opening, there are lines that you'll need to memorize by rote, and then other lines that the move order doesn't matter so much and you really just need to know the general ideas of that opening to make it out alive. As you become a more advanced tournament player, you will have more lines that you'll probably want to memorize and deeper variations within those lines. But you still need to have a balance of both because if your opponent plays a move that you're not anticipating, you need to know kind of how to respond. At the highest levels, a new move in an opening is called a novelty, which is something that continues to advance that particular opening's theory and kind of adds more interest to the game. But at the lower levels, a lot of times if your opponent plays something you've never seen before, Often it's because it's not very good. And so if you know your opening really well, you'll know exactly how to punish that mistake either tactically or positionally later in the game. So there are openings that are more setup based and for newer players, these can be a really good step into the world of learning a new opening. Once you're a little bit more of an experienced player, even those setup based openings, you'll want to be learning different responses to different move orders that your opponent might play, different setups they might play against you so that you can get the best advantage that you can out of the opening. So the work isn't over after you've just watched like one openings video. Speaking of videos, they are honestly a great resource when you're first starting to learn an opening. We live in the age of YouTube education. There is so much great information out there available for free. It's really not necessary to spend a dime on opening materials um, up until you're like a pretty advanced player, honestly. There's just so much out there. But I think as a relatively new player, it's important to experiment around with different openings and kind of get an idea of what kind of positions you like to get into, whether they're really like closed off positions with all the pawns still on the board, or if they're more open, tactical, attacking types of positions. So let's say you've decided on an opening that you'd like to learn. You kind of like the general ideas. Maybe you've seen some master games that turned out really cool and you want to play that opening. Where do you start? I would recommend playing some practice games with that opening just to make sure that you're really certain that you want to get into the kinds of positions that opening will give you. These can be blitz or rapid, just make sure you have enough time to remember like the general ideas of that opening as you're going through. So just get a feel for that opening. Even if you lose, just pay attention to the kinds of positions that you're getting into and see if it's something that you'd be interested in studying further. So then once you're ready to really dive into that opening, it's a good idea to find a place like a study to put all of the lines that you're going to be learning so that if you take a step back from that opening or if you need to like take a break from chess and then come back to it later, um, you all of your lines are there and you won't have to really start from scratch with that opening. So I'm going to be using Lee Chess to create this study. I know chess.com has a similar feature and there are plenty of other ways to create an opening study, but this is just the one we'll be using for today. So the way that I've found to make these kinds of studies the most useful and practical tools for me is to keep them as organized as possible and to use sort of an organizational system that works the best for the way I think and memorize. So I'm starting this study from scratch and how I would normally go about doing it is making a new chapter for each of the main lines that I'm gonna wanna study and then also making chapters for different traps. So in general, the first few moves of any opening are going to be the same. Where they start to branch out is where you're gonna wanna create different chapters and you can kind of decide that for yourself and it does kind of depend on the opening. Sometimes there are a bunch of branches on move three and other times it doesn't really get going until like move five or six. So studies are a way to compile the lines that you actually want to memorize. So I'm not gonna learn an entirely new opening for this video, but I already play the French and I want to go a little bit deeper into a particular line. And so this is where we're gonna start. I played a really nice game with this line. Um, so I copied the PGN in here. It was a classical game in a recent tournament I played in. And we will start with this as sort of our inspiration game and see where I veered from the theory. Okay, so I have my sample game in and now I'm going to add another chapter, which is going to be this certain line. So I'm going to quickly copy these first few moves into the new chapter. Okay, and this is an example of, I knew the general ideas in this position. It's very similar to the advance, which I do play the main line 
Um, but this around move eight is where I remember I was sort of out of my theory, if you can call it that. And that's also where my opponent after the game said that he'd never seen this next move, which was bishop e7. Now looking at the computer, this gives white a pretty clear advantage, and so I don't think I want to play this move again. Um, my opponent did capitalize on this by bringing out the queen, and the game got really messy, but I think this is where we'll leave this game and start creating some new lines of theory that I want to follow. So the way I do this is a combination of looking at what the computer wants and what is generally being played by players around my level and also by masters. And I remember when I was first starting to do this, it was really hard to know when to pay more attention to what the computer wanted and when to pay more attention to what was like generally played by people around my level. But as you get more experience, you'll sort of be able to figure that out for yourself and also decide which of the best lines you actually want to learn and memorize. So I remember I was studying a different opening a while back and there was some lines where I had to trade off one of my bishops for a knight pretty early on in the game. And I really didn't like the positions I was getting because the position was really opening up and I wished that I had had my bishop pair. And so I decided to play a different line in that particular opening just so that I could keep my bishops on the board. So little preferences like that will also help you to decide which lines you would actually like to play. This doesn't mean that you should disregard lines based on some hard and fast rule, like I will always keep the bishop pair on the board because, I mean, that's just not realistic. But as you get more games under your belt and you know the kinds of positions you actually like to play, this will help you as you're learning different lines and variations. So anyway, in this particular position, um, the computer gives three top moves that are, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. In my mind, I don't really see a difference between these. I would probably choose one of the top two. So we're looking at a6 or bishop c5. Looking at the player database, it looks like bishop c5 is the most played, um, followed by knight takes d4, just simplifying. Um, but that one has a 51% win rate for white. So I don't think we're gonna go with that one. So notice the computer's top move a6 is not even in these top couple of options for the player database. Even in the master's database, it's a little further down um, on the list. So that doesn't mean I'm not going to consider playing it, but it most likely means that the kind of positions you get are gonna be a lot more technical and probably a little less practical. So now castles is the top move. It's the second engine choice. Um, looking a little further into these lines, we can trade down a little bit more um, or we can sort of keep the tension. Realistically, I'd probably spend more time actually like looking through these lines and see sort of the general plans that people do. Um, but in this case, let's just make it simple and castle. So now we have up to move nine in this variation. I'll consider this the main line. And this is the first thing I would start by completely memorizing. So again, going back to the practical side of things, when I'm learning a new line, I really like to incorporate tactile memorization, which means I actually use a physical board and I go through and move the pieces. I would go through all nine of these moves three different times to really drill it in and make sure I can do it without looking at the computer or the lines at all. And so as soon as I feel like that's solid, then I will go through it another time with the board. This time as I'm going sort of paying attention to the kinds of moves that if I was actually playing this in a game, which moves I would be thinking about, which ones I might be worried about. And then I would add those moves in as different variations under this main line. So for example, here might be a branch. In the game, my opponent took with knight, but I might be thinking, okay, what if they take with bishop? And my intuition was right. We do wanna take with knight and actually snag the bishop pair. And the rest of this seems pretty self-explanatory. If they take with knight, um, we can go bishop c5. Computer also likes a6. So this is a great example of, I want to keep my opening memorization as simple as possible. So if there's a move that I can play in response to two different moves, in this case, they could take with the queen or they could take with the knight. In both cases, bringing the bishop out to c5 is totally fine. Um, that's probably the line that I'm going to memorize. I'm not gonna memorize two different responses to that because realistically, I'm just not going to remember that. So this is sort of how I would play around and learn different variations in a new opening or a new line that I'm learning, just playing through natural moves or top computer moves and seeing the different general ideas and then deciding on the simplest way that I can to meet those different possibilities. 
So once I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of piece development and general ideas in this new opening, then it's time for me to go back and play some more practice games armed with my new knowledge and see how they go. If you lose straight away out of the opening, either from some kind of a trap or just a move that you weren't expecting, that's something that you can bring back to your study and add in so that you don't fall for it again. And then as you play more games, you can add more lines to your study and just really increase the depth of your knowledge of that particular opening. I cannot recommend enough the value of tactile learning, actually moving the pieces on the board um, as a way to memorize different lines, especially for somebody like me who learned how to play chess on a computer. Um, this has been really helpful in my board visualization and also, like I said, just memorizing things. There are plenty of additional resources for learning openings outside of what I showed in this video. There's like chess bowl courses and you can buy different books and things, but I hope this gives you sort of a basic idea of how to go about starting a repertoire and expanding it as you play more games. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know how you like to study openings in the comments because we're all just sharing ideas here. Don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I'll see you soon.